Hello guys and gals, uh, I would like to welcome you in this first ever uh, tutorial, maybe it's not a tutorial, it's more like a workflow video. Uh, some of you asked for it after I put up those photos of this lovely uh, 2CV uh, Citroen uh, on the groups like uh, Automotive uh, Photography Education or Car Photography. Uh, so today uh, we are here. And obviously I won't be showing you how I've done those photos because they are already finished and you can see a video uh, unfortunately in, uh, in Polish um, but maybe maybe you will be able to take out something of it for yourself. Today we will be working on something slightly different, well totally different uh, and slightly younger. We will be working on this lovely uh, Nissan Skyline GTR R33, if I'm correct. Uh, this is one of the shots that I did uh, maybe a week ago. And uh, with some of the shots uh, already done, as you can see, uh, I have one left uh, to do. Uh, and obviously we will be working on this one. And this will be a photo of the back of the car. So those shots are uh, still a row and we will be working on them uh, to create something similar to mm, this one uh, to maintain the same vibe and you will be able to see uh, what I am doing mostly in Photoshop because today we'll be working only in Photoshop and uh, Lightroom. Maybe someday we will make some tutorial outside and I will show you my uh, lightning techniques uh, on a real car. But this is the future, so um, we'll be moving on. Uh, but first I would like to just say a few words uh, about the place uh, and the thing that we are doing right now, because uh, you're watching this video on our channel uh, Garage Age. And uh, Garage Age is a place, a um, idea, a project that I am doing with uh, my friend. Uh, and obviously I am responsible for taking photos of uh, many different cars. We also do a videos, as you can see on this uh, channel. Uh, and uh, I'm inviting you to subscribe this channel. You can also find us uh, on a Facebook, on a Instagram. For now, all of those platforms are uh, mostly in Polish, uh, so maybe in the future we will change it, but our YouTube channel and those tutorials will be done uh, mostly in English as today and all of the videos that you can see on this uh, channel, so a uh, video about uh, C3 and C4 Corvette or uh, a video from a old timers uh, rally all of those videos uh, will get their English subtitles soon and everything that we'll be doing in the future and we have lots of plans will be done also in Polish but with English subtitles. So if you want, if you're interested in different, rare, uh, maybe a bit forgotten cars, you can subscribe our channel and you will be able to understand what we are talking about because soon you will get the subtitles to uh, every of the videos that you can see on our channel. Uh, YouTube channel. And now we will go to this work through video. So as you can see mm, we had four cars. Obviously that day I was working only on the Skyline uh, because that was the one that I was aware of. And when I reached this place, uh, this old farm, uh, there was two uh, MK4 uh, Supras and uh, Impreza uh, STI. So um, Obviously, I didn't have uh, enough time to work with all of those four cars and this uh, grey silver uh, Supra, you can find a gallery on our blog, uh, I've already done it. Uh, and, well, we just have time for one uh, photo with four cars uh, in one place. And then I've spent the rest of that evening with this uh, Supra, not Supra, Skyline. Uh, and as you can see, we have some shots over here. Uh, as I told you, this is the, well, the benchmark for this, uh, for this session. Uh, and I have this final shot to do right now and we'll be working on it. 
first of all, let's look at those uh, raw photos. And mm, here I have like maybe six of them. Uh, right. So as you can see, I gradually uh, litten up the parts of the card that I'm interested in. And we will talk more about each of them uh, when we get into the Photoshop. So you will see how they work to make a full image uh, of mm, this particular uh, shot. Uh, so the only thing that I do in Lightroom prior to going to Photoshop is a slight adjustment to those photos um, before I send them to uh, Photoshop. Uh, and I've already done a small preset for this particular shoot. I will just copy it from this one. So now we will just paste all those uh, settings to the rest of the photos and we will go to the... what? To Photoshop. Control. Control plus Shift plus S if you're working on a uh, Windows, just like me, to synchronize all the settings. Uh, now they have been pasted to the rest of the photos from this shoot and right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Of course, it will take uh, some time, so we will see each other in a few seconds. Okay, so we are in Photoshop and um, as you can see, I have quite a lot of layers I've already. I've actually was surprised how many layers I've took for this photo, but yeah, okay. And the first thing that I do most times is that I'm making sure that all the photos, all the layers are in place. And to do that, I use very simple tool, which is edit and auto align layers uh, because sometimes it might happen that you moved your tripod uh, or something changed the wind blows and the uh, lining of this uh, of those photos might be slightly uh, slightly different which isn't a big problem but it's much easier to work with all those layers aligned so to be sure uh, that everything is fine uh, and not to be surprised later on, I just do it mm, at the beginning and if it will be okay, we will move on uh, with the edit. So as you can see, not much have happened in here, but now I'm pretty sure that everything is in place and there will be no surprises. So first of all, I start with a background layer and in this case I think this one will be just fine because I want something to stack up the rest of the photos on and probably I won't be using anything from this particular photo but I just want to make um, some order in those photos uh, and I've marked it green so this is my uh, base layer and upon this layer I will be adding uh, those that I find interesting or this particular shot from uh, each of the photos. All right, so uh, in the past I was going through all the photos and I was typing the names of what I can find on this or that or other layer, uh, but now I'm doing it just step by step with each photo and sometimes I'm getting back to the ones that I need. So maybe it's a bit sloppy, but it's faster. Right, so let's go to the first uh, first photo, I will drag it over the uh, base and as you can see uh, it's not the best but some parts of this photo will be used to this overall uh, picture. First of all I really enjoy the uh, roof of the car which is quietly nice uh, litten from the left side. Uh, I like this um, Diffuser. This is not a diffuser, I forgot the word, but you know what it is. And some parts on the side, maybe the mirror, the uh, rear uh, wheel. Uh, this is something that I will use. And I mostly work in uh, a written opacity mode, where I can see uh, everything that is stacking up on the photo. So, for now, 
I can see that some parts of this base photo, the back of this photo, which probably won't be used, uh, are going through this photo and uh, this layer, and we can see all of those brighter parts of the photo on those uh, layers. So in this situation, as I told you, I would like to uh, use this part, roof, uh, wheels, and maybe something else. And what I will do is that I won't be removing things from the photo, I will be adding them back. So what I do is I create a mask for this layer and I invert it. So now everything is visible and brush and I will change the color to black as a foreground. I will be able to remove things obviously. This is how it works. But in this case, as I told you, I want to add things to overall photo and not remove them very precisely. Again, I feel this is faster to do than to removing all the parts. So I will invert this, uh, this mask with Ctrl plus I and everything disappears. The mask is inverted. And now I will take a brush. I will change the colors from uh, white as a foreground. And now I can add something back from this photo. And I will start with this. Again, I don't remember the name diffuser, not really. Tail thingy? No, not really. I cannot remember the words, sorry. And as you can see, uh, the contrast is slightly different. For now, it looks uh, odd because we don't see any other, uh, any other um, layers of this uh, image. But you will have to trust me that those things will be uh, looking just fine after we finish with this car. And yeah, this will be nice. So as you can see, I'm using a brush just to add some parts from this car that I really like. Uh, obviously, this light streak on the side isn't something that I like. I will be working on it later on. But I enjoy the back of the bumper, the back of the car. This will maybe okay, maybe not. We have some other passes with the lights, so we will see how finally it will end up. But for now, I will leave it like this. I will leave this wheel. I will remove those parts over here. I don't need them. I believe that I will find something better later on. Um, this is me. We don't need me on this photo. Okay, we remove all of those things over here. We'll add something here, but we will remove it or actually cover it with other passes later on. And I think that in this case, for this photo, this particular layer, this is enough uh, of the things that I can took to the final photo. So obviously, it doesn't look very nice. Uh, and I want to remove those parts, of course. Sorry, I forgot about this. And those parts with the light on the surface of the car. Uh, so I will have this black hole. It doesn't look good, obviously, but we will try to work with it later on. And you must know that I'm not a best at painting at spot. Of course, I can do it. I try to remove as much um, lights um, that are reflecting in the car as it is possible on the spot but sometimes when i have to think too much i just prefer to go with worst kind of materials back to photoshop and work with them um, that way uh, and this is also fine i believe that so okay so this is the first uh, layer we will go with another one mm -hmm. okay and again, I will change the opacity to the, to the lighten, lighten, I'm sorry. Uh, and as you can see, now this part of the car and the roof are much better, actually, because some parts that are uh, taken from the previous photo are mixing with uh, the ones that I have here already. Uh, but actually, more things from this photo are better than 
those from a previous one. So probably I will take them as the ones that will be used in the final photo. Alright, I will turn off this layer right now and I will work just with this one. I'm removing this one because apparently it's not as good as the uh, second pass, so goodbye. And we are getting back to this uh, pass and as you can see it's much cleaner. So uh, I will remove things from a uh, surroundings of the car so I don't want them to be involved in the final uh, final shot because I've done some uh, shots and light passes around the environment uh, and I want to have much cleaner much nicer ground around the car and I won't be using the one from those passes that I've took directly over the car doesn't have to be very precise because we will use other layers to make it uh, nicer in the final uh, shot but some things are fine. all right we'll add something to the back all right and as you can see it sucks but don't worry we will make it look better all right so let's go to another layer and here we have something like this and what you can see first of all i will use this part of the ground uh, for this photo because the shadows around the car are much nicer and they will work just fine with the rest of the photo you will see it on the uh, final shot maybe i will use something to uh, make this part which the name i still cannot remember look even better so mask invert mask and now first of all i will take care of the ground so that's the one let's look if we can get something back to this teaser still cannot remember the word okay and something no we don't want that because we have this very uh, ugly light streak from want uh, obviously we don't want that so we will just leave it like this and because the roof is pretty nice maybe we will then lighten it up a bit from the second side to uh, avoid this light streak through the middle of the roof but for now we will leave it like this maybe we will find something better okay so from this shot i think this is all let's go to another one what do we have here here we have actually a shot that I've used only to get nicer wheels. Actually, as you can see, the contrast is a bit off, the contrast is different and we will work with it. But for now, I think that the wheel that is in the back looks just fine with this light. I will use this as of light to make this uh, front wheel brighter but again the contrast on it it's a bit off so that's why I will use a uh, curves and I will do a clipping mask to work only on this particular layer and I will try to break those blacks to make them look much more natural and this will be better okay this this like this we'll remove things from around the wheel exactly and now it's looking much better especially with the lights coming from um, above the uh, wheel so this is it there wasn't much to add from this photo and we can go to another one but to be totally honest i feel that you've already get what i will be doing so now i will do all the uh, other parts of this photo without any bigger comment if i will find something important to comment on then i will turn on 
but for now we will do a big fast forward so let's go the one thing that you should know is that I usually don't use ACPL filters on my uh, photos, uh, light painted photos, because with a correct uh, angle of light, you can actually kill all the reflections on the car uh, without using a filter. But in this case, and in many cases with my photos, I like some reflections in the body of the car because they look much more natural. Uh, I don't like this uh, situation where all the car, every part of the car is perfectly lit. Uh, everything is visible because it looks a bit uh, odd, actually, in my opinion, for my taste. So this is why I'm leaving those things. I could remove them. I could light the car in a way that they will disappear. But in this situation, I will leave it like this. Um, and now we can move on. So here I have this photo with a pass uh, of the light from a very different angle uh, from below because I will be using it to remove reflections of the uh, light wand in the uh, what uh, in the windows of the car and I can also use it with a dark opacity to remove some of the mm, reflections in the car. So I will do double of this uh, layer, I will turn off this one, and now I will work on this one, and I will be using it in a normal mode to use it as a layer for the windows, so mask, invert, and then I will paint it in, just the windows, really something is very wrong with my computer today, and as you can see I'm getting this really nice window without any reflections. Uh, of course we have some light on the upper parts of the interior of the car but it will look just fine in the final photo so don't worry. And now as I told you we can try to use this second exactly the same layer to make those uh, light passes, light reflections in the body uh, disappear. And to do that, I will use a darken mode. And as you can see, everything, every little light reflection in the body of the car disappeared, but obviously it looks very uh, unnatural, very weird. And again, I will make a mask. I will invert it and I will try to use it just on those uh, parts that have those lights in it. So over here, and it doesn't look really bad, I actually leave it like this, something like this. We can use it in the mirror and we will try to use it here. And for now you think that those colors doesn't match, it's true, but we will be doing something else uh, later on. We have those um, edges of the uh, dark light, actually the reverse of the dark light in those um, lines, but this will be very easy to remove later on. And we want some of the glare on those parts, so we won't be removing all of it, just the worst parts, with some of it back in the shot. Okay, and now let's have a look at those big reflections. As you can see, it's not very good, it's not very nice, and that's why I don't use it for bigger, uh, bigger parts of the light in the car. This is something that I will be removing uh, later on manually. As I told you, I thought that I will have this nicer uh, ambient and light on the uh, other side of the car. We have this nice light streak over here, nicely lit uh, nicely lit uh, roof. So this is something that we will be using, but of course not all of it. Again, 
just a part, so mask, reverse, or invert, as you wish, and we will make it look much nicer with just a few adjustments. Okay, this, and now we have the whole car. This one light is hitting directly the uh, barn doors, so uh, obviously this is a ambient for overall uh, photo. So when I will change it to uh, Litten, I will get this very nice uh, photo. And this big nasty black hole is disappearing, so this is quite important to remember that you have to light up not only a car but the things that surrounds the car if you are working in such dark uh, environment as i was that day because this is a old farm in the middle of nowhere and there were no additional lights uh, that i could use as an as a environment lights that's why i needed to create my own environment lightning and as you can see it turns out quite nice and I think we will have some more over here, that's right, so again, of course we don't have to use it, but in this case I find that this, um, those parts look much better in the overall photo than uh, the photo without them. So I will leave them in the photo and we will take another look for some lights and I usually use two or three of them. Uh, I do two or three of them on the spot because I want to have the options on how much of the lights from the original taillights or headlights will spill uh, in the final photo. So in this situation all of them are okay, but I will use them uh, at the end of the uh, today's work. We have some few more shots to uh, look after before we will add light. So sometimes I litten up the ground to make, uh, again, environment, background, foreground a bit uh, more natural, but this one actually isn't adding much. Maybe I will use it to add some light under the car, but I don't want to lose all of this hard shadow. I want to just get some details in this area under the car so it won't look so unrealistic. So let's turn it on. Uh, let's make a mask. Let's invert it. Paint it in just under the car. But of course we will change the opacity of this particular layer so it won't be as bright as it is right now and it looks quite okay. All right, let's go for another uh, layer. All right, so what I will do now, I will go again through all of the layers. I will turn them off and on and I will see what things I can remove from all of those layers in the matter of light streaks on the body of the car because I want to remove them. I won't be leaving things like this on the car, but some of them I want to leave because if you are working with a glossy, very reflective car, you don't want to remove all of the reflections because you will lose this uh, glossy look. If you are working with a car that is, uh, for example, uh, covered with uh, made wrap or something like this, then you can go with total removing of the reflections. But in this situation with this car, it was pretty reflective. It has this very nice red color and not all of the reflections will be removed from the final photo. So let's go through all of those layers. We are almost over in the matter of putting those parts together, the, the different parts of the images into a one big image. So now we will merge all of those photos into, uh, into one. We will just take out those lights, tail lights actually, and the rest will be merged into one photo. But first I will make a copy 
of all of those layers. So uh, I select them and now I press Ctrl plus J. I will have the exact copy of those layers and now right click merge layers. Right, I will mark it yellow, whatever. And now I have all those layers uh, merged into the one uh, photo. And on this one photo, I will work some more uh, in the matter of removing those uh, lights. And to do that, I will be using some basic tools that you can find in Photoshop. Um, first of all, obviously, I will use a, a healing brush tool or patch tool, spot healing brush tool, things that you can find over here. Some um, clone stamp, not very much, but some. The dodge, burn and sponge tool to, uh, for example, uh, remove uh, too much of a, a saturation in parts of the car. But the one, the most important one that I will be using is the brush tool, but not simple brush tool, but mixer brush tool, because this is something that will help us to remove all those reflections and cover the parts of the card that uh, will have different uh, colors, different uh, not matching colors of the, uh, of the paint to make them look even. And of course, I will show it to you in a second. First, we will try to remove those big uh, light streaks on the car. So I will select them. Not very precisely because I will be working with a brush later, like this. And I will try to remove it with a content aware uh, fill. So, this content aware. And of course, it's not perfect, but it's not terrible. I've seen uh, worst cases. So, here it's pretty okay. We of course have some problems over here. We will have to stamp clone it. Um, and we'll do it right now. So I will use a clone stamp tool. And if we will leave this very thin flick of light on the edge of the panels of the car, it's fine for me. Sometimes I am removing them very thoroughly and I'm for example, painting back this black um, edge of the car. But I'm not certain that in this scenario it will be something to do with this car. I will just leave it like this because it looks pretty natural to have some edges written up by the light. And in overall image, it doesn't look like something uh, very significant to this image. So, I will leave it like this. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This one will be slightly more complicated because it's close to the uh, edge of the window. So, I will use a pen tool and I will try to select this light very precisely. And then I will try to remove it with a content over fill, but I feel it won't work uh, very good, so we will try to do it by hand, but first let's select it. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but overall colors are fine, but as you can see we have this grey part we have to remove, and to remove it we will be using a mixer brush tool. Mixer brush tool works in a way that it's taking a color from the place where we are with the brush to decide that we are brushing in it. So I will brush from right to left to match those colors, just like this. And as you can see, it's mixing those colors pretty fine. I feel that they are slightly brighter than the rest of this part, this pillar. So. I will take some parts from above to make it darker. And now one important thing happened with this part that we have uh, selected over here. When we brush 
with a mixer brush tool. One thing is happening. When you look closely, we have some kind of texture on this car uh, over here, everywhere actually. And this might be a ISO uh, sensor sensitivity appearing on this um, part of the image. It might be the paint with uh, some dirt or some um, structure of this paint on the car. And when we brush in, we lose this structure. As you can see, it's very uh, smooth over here. This is something that when we will turn it, turn the selection off, we will be able to see. And to make it look more natural, we will have to add some kind of noise to this part of the image. And to do so, we will use a filter noise, add noise to this image. And as you can see, it's too much, obviously. We need something much more uh, subtle. So we will go with all point example maybe even 0.4 and it starts to look of course the grains aren't exactly the same but in this situation it looks pretty fine we have this edge of those two parts over here we can select it for example and uh, match it with something else or we can uh, brush it in again, but for now, I think this is just fine. Add some dirt here and there, we can remove it with a touch tool. This is something that I would like to remove. And now, actually, I will have to do exactly the same with all the things that I will be willing to remove from this car from the body of this car all the reflections have to go the same process all the reflections that I want to remove so again I won't be talking much I will be doing it and I believe you will get it right so now this is a cleaning time here I have just one uh, thing to mm, tell you because as you can see, the most of the car, of this part of the uh, car is bright, bright red. And here I can take and make the rest of this part bright. But as you can see, here we have some darker tones of this red in the car. So I will take a sample from this darker color and I will brush it in over here to make it look more natural. So we have some brighter parts of this color. Like this. And of course, I will mix it in with the rest. So now I will change to the mixer brush and I will try to make it even. As you can see, we've cleaned a lot of details in the car, uh, especially in the back. I've removed my foot. Uh, so, this is it, mostly. Uh, I will work on the lights right now, then I will turn them on, and then we will jump to uh, Lightroom for some final touches. Okay, so as you can see, this is the final work in Photoshop. And now we will just 
make it a bit sharper and get back to Lightroom. So as you can see that's it with the car in a Photoshop. The biggest problem actually, maybe not the problem, but it took me a while to take care of those light streaks in this uh, right tail light. But finally I think it's okay. Uh, I've changed this shadow over here, I brushed it in so it doesn't look so hard, it's not so uh, dark. Uh, and now I feel it looks a bit better and this is actually it. It took me a while, I think mostly uh, because I've talked a lot about what I've been doing and this is new for me, or actually new in this format of automotive photography over YouTube, uh, but still I think it's okay. I've just saved it as a PSB file which stands for large document uh, format because uh, this one uh, contains lots of layers uh, and it takes a lot of um, hard drive space, so uh, you cannot save it as a regular uh, TIFF file. And now we can go to Lightroom. Uh, here it is. And uh, first of all we will crop it, we will frame it and we will take a preset that I've already prepared for this session it's over here so as you can see we will go with this darker slightly bluish colder vibe uh, Control plus shift plus c uh, you can copy your preset and we are getting back to our photo uh, this Right, so this is basically it, um, this is how I do my work. I'm sorry, I don't know why my computer today is a bit laggy, maybe some update is coming in, uh, but hopefully this might help you uh, in achieving your goals in light painting uh, photography. So thank you for today. If you liked it, you can subscribe to the channel. As I told you at the beginning, we'll be doing all our videos with subtitles. Uh, those tutorial uh, videos I will try to do in English, but sometimes also in Polish. So hopefully uh, something more will come out out of it. Uh, and, well, see you next time.